Hengeloof concrete joints, also called HCJ, from Genk in Belgium, have recently modified their successful Omega joint into an even more perfect HCO profile. The HCO profile has various advantages and its placement is carried out as follows. The placing is done in a logical way, taking into account the area and the shape of the job site as well as the many consecutive pores to carry out. The profiles will be lined on a perfectly leveled sub-base along a rope used to determine the exact placement location. The profiles will be placed using a laser and some fix-out wood. It starts with the placing of the first profile. Once placed to level, the pins are hammered into the sub-base on both sides of the joint. Thereafter, the steel pins will be welded to the anchoring bolts of the profile, already installed to finish floor level. In this way, the HCO profile will open freely when concrete shrinks. The second profile is butted into the previous profile. The cover of the joint will serve not only to assemble, but also to align both profiles together. Thanks to the grinding of the upper lips of the joint, a perfect finish will be possible. After the joints are butted together, it will be necessary to weld the two profiles together on both sides. The placing of the profiles will continue as described previously until reaching a cross junction. The HCO crossing is reinforced and comes with a special piece to weld at the end of the joint in order to avoid blocking the joint opening. The fixing bolts do not require to be taken out before concreting, except at the pre-made cross junction. These bolts are useful during transport and placement of the joints. Once placing is complete, concreting may begin. When concreting along the joint, it is absolutely necessary to vibrate. The concrete vibration will avoid any air trap near the profile. A perfect homogeneity is required between the concrete and the profile. Concrete must be poured precisely to the level of the upper lips of the joints to offer a perfect future protection of the concrete aris. After some time, depending on temperature, humidity and the slab area, the finishing operations may begin. The dry shake is spread onto the slab surface and finishing with trowel machines can begin. Once the finish is complete, it is important to clean the lips of the joints neatly. From there on, the slab can cure. No matter the temperature and humidity level, it's necessary to respect a curing time of 28 days in order for the concrete slab to reach full strength. With concrete shrinkage, the joints will start opening. After a few weeks, the completed concrete slab can be utilized. The casting joint will protect the concrete aris. The load transfer is now guaranteed between the slabs. This type of joint can equally be used for internal and external slabs. Here are a few more interesting items to bring up. During placement, it's recommended to leave an opening of 20 millimeters between the joint and building walls and columns. An expansion material will be inserted in this opening to allow the free movement of concrete. When using a cross, it's recommended to reinforce this corner with a wire mesh. 
This same principle is generally used for the dock levelers area. These profiles can be used for slab on ground as well as for slab on piles with steel fiber concrete or conventional reinforcement. Wire mesh should always have a 30 millimeter cover in concrete to avoid any risks of oxidization. Special profiles such as galvanized or with special fixings can be produced upon request. The profiles used in this film have specific options. Please contact us to know more about our joints.